<laughs> a little hard. Okay, do you want to be Carl or Joe Hillbilly? I'll be Carl. Okay, Carl. Carl Joe. Carl Joe. <laughs> Hi, Carl Joe Hillbilly. I got, you're really blurry and in the dark. Okay, so you're out here visiting on the roof with Bishop Caldwell and Saste, and how are you feeling about all this? Well, it's day three, and uh, we were just talking about uh, the KKFI inter interview, and that was the first night, I believe. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, that yeah, kicked that, it off. That, that, that was the kickoff of it, and I think it went wonderful. Uh, man, let, let, let me tell you, the first night we did the interview from right here, from right here. Matter of fact, I, w I was sitting where you're sitting at now. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. I, I, I could hear uh, Reverend Willis in the other room, I think. Was she here? Yeah. Uh, right. Yes. Yes, she was here. They were doing Bible study at the same time point. Uh, and you could hear them kind of... Uh, I think they stopped Bible study to listen to the, the radio show. <laughs> so, that would, so the launch has been good so far. The weather's holding out. Yes. Uh, I, I know they said uh, we're supposed to get snow flurries later on tonight, but uh, I'm believing God for no snow. <laughs> uh, the, the cold is here, but we can battle it. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody want to come out and join us? Bring it on. Bring it on. Occupy. Occupy Bishop Caldwell's roof. 2931 Ask You. And uh, I did berate Bishop off camera a little bit and, and uh, Sassi assured me that uh, he is being well watched over and he is actually intending to have no food and no water for seven days and they have somewhat convinced me that that's okay I guess. Yeah is that safe because I, I, I got a bottle of Pedialyte if you need some electrolytes. I'm, I'm not taking in anything for the next seven days. Uh, no water, no uh, uh, no food, no gum, no nothing. Uh, no, it's, it's, people are starving right here in Kansas City. They're not, and no, those are not dirty. Stars. If they can, we can. You know, uh, I know it seems a little harsh and extreme, but these are harsh and extreme times that we need to band together. It really is. Yeah, the world is changing. It is. You know, when I, I think the scariest thing for me was uh, a few days before we decided to do this, driving down the street and saw a young man, a teenager. He was no more than 13 years old, a 13-year-old kid living underneath the bridge. That did it for me. And I asked him, how long have you been, has he been there? And he's told me that he's been homeless for a month eating out of trash cans. And for us not to do something about that, I would lay down my life for that young man. Because it means more to me than my own life to show somebody that he, he is worth something, that we do care. We just can't stand by and just let that happen. Not anymore. Can't do it. Yeah, we're the third, three years into a recession. Yeah. Four years, in, going on four years into a recession. And, uh, we're, in a, we're in a depression here. This is, this is a depression era type of poverty. You know, it's, it's, it's getting to the point now where if we don't do something, who is? Who is? You know, we, we made the statement a little while ago that if just every person sent in just one time. One time. That's all it that's all it needs. Just one dollar in Kansas City. You don't have to send in thousands and thousands. If every person just sent in one dollar, that would do it. We could start taking these transitional living houses, these these abandoned houses and putting people in them to where they're out of the cold. So the city has the abandoned houses in Kansas City outweigh the individual homeless three to one. That means to me that not just families, but individuals. There's no way in the world that we should have homeless in Kansas City when we have abandoned houses three to one that outnumber us. 
we need to find a way to fix those houses up and put people in them constantly. I'm sorry. You no, you're absolutely right. I mean, I mean right now, now you're trying to save four houses here on, on Ashley. Yes. Well, the city dumps all this money into these temporary projects. You know, I mean, they could just as easily dump that money into fixing up the houses. The city could pay people to fix up these houses for people to live in. They'd be creating jobs and homes. Yes, they can. You know, th that's why I said we have to start thinking outside the box. We just can't do business as usual anymore. I mean, they this don't. This is thinking outside the box. You know, for one year, we've been here for a year without no funding from anybody. We fed over thousands and thousands and thousands of people. We've housed hundreds of people. We've taken care of and put on events and, and given out 5,000 toys without any financial aid other than self-funding. And the thing about it is we, we're showing that, you know what, this is what we can do with ourselves. What can we do if we had someone that backed us? I mean, what is a kid's life worth? What is a young person's life worth? When there was a young man that was out here that was playing ball at our three-on-three -three that decided to change his life, his name was Michi. He went back and said, you know what? He went back to the gang and said, I'm giving it up. I'm giving it up. And he lost his life behind it. So it's up to us now to go ahead and say, you know what? We need to do something different for him, if nothing else. Here's a young man that gave his life up behind us in this community telling him that he can do something different other than sell drugs and kill each other. And he stood on it. You know, then we go so far as the two young men that became junior peacekeepers that saw a little old lady being pushed around and abused and they stood up for the little old lady. They told the guy that was going to beat up the little old lady, you can't do that anymore. Not here on my block not here on her porch. They came off their porch and stood up for the little lady. The guy came back and shot them and killed them. But they stood for what they believed in. That's what we have to learn. We have to start taking stands. If these young people can stand up for what they believe in, we as a community need to stand up for what we believe in. If we don't, we need to stop talking about it and be about it. That's what we need to do. Uh, I don't know. It's up to us to make a difference. I don't care if it's one kid at a time, one block at a time, but it's up to us. Uh, the Bible says that he that lays down his life, there's no greater love than he that lays his life down for his brother. It's time for us to start acting like brothers and sisters. Well, I guess we got some light on the subject. <laughs> You know, Bishop, I was thinking about the young man who was a transitional uh, a resident at, at your transitional house, and he came in and became, he was a motorcycle stunt driver now? Uh, well, what he did was he, he came in and he, he wanted to drive NASCAR. Mm -hmm. And his vision was driving NASCAR. And if you look up on our Facebook, guess what he's doing? Guess what he's doing now? We made sure that he got the connections that he needed, and now he's driving NASCAR for a living. The youngest black African American ever in, the, in, in history to get behind a NASCAR and drive. He went from being homeless to now look at him. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's part of what we do. We help others achieve their vision, their goals. That's what it's all about, working with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we, it, it's, it's so many success stories here. A young lady cook came in. Couldn't read or write, the one to become a nurse. Now, you know, she, she's in nursing school, uh, got no GED. It's just remarkable. But it takes all of us again, doing our, doing our thing. Uh, look, I learned since I've been here. I learned how to eat a little healthier. You know, certain people twist my arm and make me do it, though. But it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just the uh, green tomato bandit. <laughs> I like my green tomatoes. <laughs> I'll say, I'll, you can't bribe me with money, but you can bribe me with green tomatoes. <laughs> and a sweet potato pie in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it, it, it's... We're...